Uh, I'm Salim Asmel from Singularity University, and I'm interviewing Ralph Merkel, who is the godfather of nanotech, and today gave an enthralling lecture on nanotech, the basic building blocks, what are the major breakthroughs that were expected, and what the implications are. Uh, Ralph, thanks for taking the time for ask, answering a few questions, and I'd love to ask you a few key questions that are burning in my mind after the talk today. Sure. Uh, the first one is, uh, you, you mentioned there's a big difference between a lot of the nanotech products, quote unquote, that are out there today, and what real nanotechnology is, and I wonder if you'd explain the difference. Well, the, the nanotechnology I'm interested in goes back to the talk by Feynman in 1959, and he basically said that there was nothing in the laws of physics that prevented us from arranging things atom by atom. In this idea that someday we'll be able to economically arrange atoms in most of the ways permitted by physical law is sort of the, the driving vision of what nanotechnology is, and it's something that will take a while to achieve. Now, admittedly, there are some commercial products, uh, nano pants that are stain resistant or some other things that, that are useful. Uh, they aren't quite leading to this, this long-term capability, and so I, I don't pursue those myself. So for you, the nanotech, the real nanotech, is really atomic level manipulation and manufacturing. It's getting all of the atoms in the right place. Thorough, inexpensive control of the structure of matter. And there are a variety of ways of doing it and talking about it. But basically, it involves things like holding and positioning molecular tools and building molecular structures where everything's where you want it. Okay, great. Um, what are some of the recent breakthroughs that you talked about today? Um, well, I think one of the illustrative things that happened was the Feynman Prize uh, for 2009, and that went to, of course, two groups as usual. One was in theory and one was in experiment. The experimental prize went to a group in Japan um, in, in the lab of uh, Kustansa for doing uh, manipulation of silicon on a, a surface and some other very high precision uh, manipulation demonstrating the ability to arrange and position individual atoms and the theoretical work went to uh, Robert Freitas for again doing theoretical analysis saying that indeed we should be able to build molecular machines and discussing some of the reactions involved in how to build the molecular machines and what those molecular machines would look like. Hmm. Uh, by the way, thanks for you and Rob for co-chairing the NanoTrack this past summer and for your continuing Our involvement. Um, what, what do you see as some of the major breakthroughs that we'll soon see in nanotech? Well, on an experimental front, the ability to arrange atoms on a surface has been demonstrated by several groups. What we now want to have is the ability to build structures in three dimensions. So in other words, uh, going beyond arranging it on a surface and stacking things with very precise control. I'm expecting that in the next few years, someone is going to capture the cover of science or nature by some very impressive technological work. On the theoretical front, we're seeing continued development of the developmental pathway. In other words, if we're going to develop molecular manufacturing, we have to have a very clear picture of what the systems look like and what the development path looks like. And so I'm looking forward to continuing advances in that area. Now, many people <coughs> uh, uh, understand a little bit about nanotechnology, that it's manipulation of atoms or, or the creation of molecules. Uh, can you give us an example of a product that might be created from nanotech in the future? Computers. We know that computers have been getting better. We know what the trend lines have been. We know that we're building computers with ever smaller, ever more precise transistors. At some point, if we want to build molecular logic gates with every atom in the right place, we're going to have to have nanotechnology to do the job. And that could help keep Moore's Law on track. It'll keep Moore's Law going well beyond sort of the, the next five or ten years. It'll keep us going into the the 20 year time frame and beyond. And you mentioned this afternoon uh, nano factories that could build and self replicate. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about when that might happen and what those would um, look like? Well, the, basically, having a nano factory, which would be you know, something that sits on your desktop and you feed it a stream of bits and it does its thing and it produces some atomically precise product which is actually macroscopic in size. I mean, it might be a laptop with molecular computers and molecular memory. Those gadgets look like they're a couple decades away, 
uh, it, it's going to depend on what we do. I mean, if we have a focused program aimed at developing these systems, maybe 20 years. If we do business as usual, we're looking at 30, 40 years. It could be longer. I mean, there's a big time difference, I think, depending on how rapidly and how well focused an effort we put into achieving it. Wow. So uh, uh, let me switch this just a little bit. We've seen for today, for example, that the 3D printers, using a 3D printer, you can print 70% uh, of the, the next printer using the first printer or almost self-replicate. Uh, you mentioned that with uh, mm. uh, self-replicating technologies and, and at the nano level, we, sh we could do that almost at 100% level. Well, Can you I'll talk about that? Sure. If you're trying to build things, if you're trying to build a, you know, a product, and you're trying to build it with molecular precision, and you're using molecular tools, you need a lot of molecular tools, you need massive parallelism, and you can't be intervening. All of the molecular tools have to be doing their thing independently, they have to be operating. You can't be going in and supervising, you can't have special exceptional cases that are going to be handled by a human. The entire system has to be fully automatic. And that's one of the design objectives of nanofactories. And in fact, that's one of the things we took into account when we were designing a set of molecular tools to actually carry out the reactions. The set of tools have to be able to build another set of molecular tools. And the molecular tools have to be able to recharge themselves. So when you use a tool, you can recharge it and use it again. And in that way, you can build a system which can now build more molecular structures in a highly automated fashion and build large structures starting from small structures that work their way up. Okay. Um, and in terms of the, the cost of these, once you get these up and running, the cost mm. of producing some of these substances should be negligible. Well, we've seen the trends in computer hardware. The costs are dropping and essentially nanofactories are going to produce the same kind of economics for products across the board, and the price is going to keep dropping. Right. And you showed some uh, mole uh, molecular level, atomic level ball bearing, mm -hmm. uh, and also a universal joint. Mm -hmm. uh, those are uh, designed Those are molecular models. So one of the things you can do today is you can model molecular machines that you cannot build on a computer. And the argument for doing that is if you want to figure out what molecular machines are going to look like and what the development path for them is going to look like, you can model it on a computer today even before you can build them. Conceptually, it's the same thing as Boeing designing and building and flying airplanes on a computer before they actually engage in the physical construction. Essentially a, full, a wholehearted simulation. Exactly. And uh, so computing is playing a key role in the development of nanotech today? Lots of computing. Today? Okay. So basically the pathway that we've outlined is one where you have extensive use of computational power to model all of the critical components and to give you a clear picture of what you're going to be doing in the future. Great. Ralph, thank you very much. My pleasure.